BBC Radio 1. OK, so it's the day after your birthday. It is the day after my birthday. And because I am oh! a sucker, uh, I've got you a birthday cake. Hey, thank you so much. It's more of a birthday cupcake. Oh, my God, edible things. And also oh! pan of raisin. <laughs> Yes! Which I know you're a bit sick of. No! I physically can't be. Yes! Thank you so much! My and they're pleasure. good and gooey. And which is yeah, yeah, yeah. excellent. Obviously. Oh my god, that smells so good. For the, <laughs> for the sake of the editor, yes. I'm going to ask you to put them on the floor. I think you should. I think we can. Look, there we are. I've got uh, my. Otherwise, I will try to lean over and eat them as well. Oh, right, okay, good that's, point. That's well, the they're out of sight. So there we are. Outside. Um, but you can still smell them. Thank okay, you. so you have been, not to scare you here, yes. in the biggest TV show of all time. <laughs> You've also been in a Terminator movie, yes. a Star Wars film, and now you're in a rom-com, a Christmas rom-com, yeah. directed by Paul, I want to say, Feig? Correct. Yeah. So, how's it going? Yeah, good. <laughs> Yeah. Um, good. Excellent. Lovely. Yeah. Brilliant. It's a good yeah. life so far. Yeah. Things are going great. Excellent. They're going well. Now, you've been in so many uh, genres and big things, and I just feel mm. like the world's at your feet, if you don't mind me saying. Thanks. No pressure. Could you tell me whether any of these following genres appeal to you? Could you be in a Western? No. No, I couldn't not be in a Western, but Westerns are not my Cup of tea. thing that I would watch lots of. Got it. I read books that are... I've read like three or four books that are set in the wild, wild west. But I, wiki, 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 wild, wild west. Jim West, no, I'm not going to it. Um, but, I, but I don't tend to watch the wild west movies. And this is why, it's because it's mainly just boys. It is just boys. And I think when I was a kid, my brother and my dad would watch westerns. Mm. And I'd be like, well, good for you. I can't do any of that, apparently. What, where's me? It's... Calamity Jane? Yeah, exactly. Clutching like a handkerchief to my breast yes so i just never really got on with them after this i'm thinking musical well here's the thing i love singing mm -hmm. always have always will um but the actual musical things i get i'm incredibly picky about oh i see do you know what i mean so is it song time or bust guys and dolls they, 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 they make no rhyme or reason I mean, my favourite musical of all time is West Side Story, 100%. So I do like the more kind of, you know, the old school. Got it. Musicals. Fingers crossed this young whippersnapper, Steven Spielberg, can do it justice. I know. I think he's going to nail it. I, I think reckon. he's going to absolutely nail it. He's finally going to excel. Yeah. <laughs> Would I mean, he... could he just try harder? Give it some effort. <laughs> can I also suggest one of the best things about being you right now is that in this film, yes. there are many great moments, but you sharing a cocktail sausage on a stick... <laughs> with Emma Thompson I just went oh I want to be you yeah no I mean Emma is my agent told me about this project and they said Emma's written a script and I was I'm like in. yes um, I've admired loved and adored Emma from afar for my entire life and getting to be in a movie that she wrote, she was there every single day, and then she played my mum. So, uh, tell me about the sleep. She Fine. never sleeps. Exercise? Really just Not sleep. at all. Alcohol? Oh, oh she's drinking while. like the pirate. Oh, OK, fine. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much for your time. Let's go, Mum. And now we're pals. And it's excellent. Um, yeah, I just, we just, um, I just love her. I just absolutely love her. And she just gets better and better. As if chumming up with E.T., my term, wasn't right. good enough, you're also hanging out with Michelle Yeoh, who's throwing yes. baubles at you. Yes. And there's a genuine sense of best friendship there as well. Yes, she is hilarious. And, and when they told me she was casting it, this was before Crazy Rich Asians came out, or rather before I'd seen it. And, um, and you're like, what? She's like the most sublime, but very serious actress that I know. So, what? and then she just com she comes out with it and she completely nails it. Yeah, of course she does. What was it like uh, getting direction, you know, doing your thing whilst Emma Thompson is essentially dressed as a giant avocado pear? Yeah. I look like a, a huge avocado pear. <laughs> In a big puffer jacket with the big headphones. She does like the big headphones and a big fluorescent beanie is normally it. Normally being like, do you want some mulled wine? <laughs> Can I give you some more chocolate? The We're just going to get a pint. Would you like to come? And you're like, yeah. Yes, yes, I do. Whatever you're saying, I'm doing it. Yeah, exactly. What's harder to speak, and I'm guessing the language here, was it Serbo-Croat? Yeah. Or Dothraki? Dothraki, definitely. Dothraki is, you know, someone made it up pretty recently. It's real hard. There's no 
with with all largely speaking with all European languages, they're like there's a rhyme and reason. There's the like, oh, that sounds a bit like the French or the Italian or the Latin or that it makes you know. Mm -hmm. With just racking it, I, 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 yeah. That's a pretty good bit of it. Actually. There we go. Yeah. I know. Gag up. Fuck. Fucked up all of my Dothraki. Amelia Clark, Star of Last Christmas. Yes. Which is a movie inspired by the music of George Michael and Wham. Mm -hmm. What is your favourite Christmas song? You're not going to believe me. Genuinely Last Christmas. Genuinely Last Christmas. It is my favourite. Because I've started to, doing the promotion of this, I've started to be like, just make up another one. Just like make up one that doesn't sound as ridiculous as you, it being this. But no, I just, I just love it. It's got like the, the bells. It's got the snow stuff, although, stay now. Stay. Yes. The music. Those boys in that snowy, snowy outfit. There, no song makes All of me, this. Oh. All of that. I, I love always it. think of the music video. Yeah, always. And, and it's just, snowing. I'm there, I've got my parka on. <laughs> yes. Oh, I've amazing. got my hat that is nowhere near my head. It's just resting atop my head. <laughs> me and my brother used to dress like that for a very long time. We had these 17 posters everywhere. Yeah, I remember we wearing uh, carpenter jeans. Oh, nice. You know when you've got room yeah. to hang your yeah. hammer? Yeah, definitely. And and that they probably started around your knees. Mm. And your boxes were like, obviously long johns. Yeah. Yeah. There are some funny audition moments in Last Christmas. What's your best audition story? Well, this is, the more that I say it, the sketchier it sounds. But when I was um, in the dark days of pre-Game of Thrones, no other job, <laughs> fresh out of drama school, doing six jobs that were nothing to do with acting, I went for an audition and it was for an advert. I shan't say what the company was because I'll get in trouble, I'm sure. Um, but it was, uh, I was there and they were basically saying, we just need you to react to what we're saying. I swear to God, this was a setup. So the camera's there and they're like, okay, cool. So you, you just come out of the shower and obviously I was wearing pajamas of some description and you, you, there's a guy there. And then you start to see that there's something coming out of his belly button and it's a weird little man. And the little man starts dancing to some crazy music. Here's the music. And you just, you just, you just can't help but want to dance with him. So we need you to dance and we need, and they just start talking me through it. And obviously you do it. Those tapes might be somewhere. I have no idea. That is probably the worst audition story. It's like the low pack I butter have. man. That's exactly it. But it came out of his belly button. And I was meant to be like, ooh, this guy, these tunes, this is amazing. I'm having the time of my life. Clearly didn't get the part. Yeah, I mean. Slash I never saw the audition. I'd also say, mm. not the worst thing you didn't get the part. No, no, probably good. Yeah, probably yeah. good. Yes. So just to rewind back to a tiny underseen TV program, Game yeah. of Thrones. I, I yeah. think that's its name. I barely remember it. That's right, yeah. What mementos did you end up actually taking home after eight seasons? So I, this is where I need to learn my lesson. I'm too much of a goody two shoes. Everybody took something and I was like, but, but, but please sir, can I take a wig? Seeing <laughs> as there's eight and I played the character for 10 years, could I take one? And they're like, yeah, maybe. I'm like, could I take one of the coats? Because we've got eight. <laughs> there's this coat in double. Please, can I have something? And they were like, we will, we will, we'll send it to you. So I was like, okay, I won't take anything because they're going to send it to sure. me. Sure. Nothing. Unacceptable. Nothing. Are there any lines of dialogue from that that you'll never ever forget? I'm a Khaleesi, not a queen. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty badass. Or we'll break the wheel to ah! People who regularly watch this show will know that I'm slightly obsessed with blooper reels. Oh, okay. And there are a We've few, got a few yeah. gorgeous moments with you guys. <laughs> the way you guys swear when you get a line wrong. Yeah. It's are very good. Yeah. Who would you say is the best swearer? Oh, Peter. Tell me. <laughs> Fuck me. Benevolent. Ah, it sucks. The benevolent enslavers. Oh, fuck. Peter's pretty great because he just, he's so serious, obviously, with a lot of his lines is when he's really, and when he just, and he, and it's like, oh, it just kind of comes out. <laughs> Kit gets a little bit more despondent. Uh. His ones are like, oh. <laughs> and you're just like, it's all right, babe, it's all right. You're gonna be okay. With both Game of Thrones and Terminator and a uh, little Star Wars film as well, what's been the most yeah. surreal CGI moment of your career? With Game of Thrones, it was just a lot of green, like a Laura, Laura green. And so when I first, when the dragon got like, pimp my dragon, season eight, it was, ne it had the, the cameras on the wires and they're like zooming and you're like, it's gonna take my head off and I have to not avoid it. And all that stuff was amazing. But in Star Wars, we had, Millennium Falcon and we were in it and we it was on hydraulics and then we had like 
the kind of surround little screen and it was hyperdrive and it, we could see it. So they actually had the real graphics for us to look and at. And it went <laughs> And it literally, so you're there and, and all you can see through the Millennium Falcon window is whoom. And it was the first little while we were like, do it again. <laughs> Play it again. That's so fucking cool. Punch it again. <laughs> again. <laughs> and then there's like the eye that comes up. And um, yeah, that was kind of mental. Yeah. Would you agree with me that Phoebe Waller-Bridge is too talented? Too talented? Well, we need it. We need too much talent. I just kind of resent the fact that somebody <laughs> can play a droid in a Star Wars film and people forget about that. I know. I know. I know. Too talented. No, because I can't do any slant on Phoebes. Of course I, not. At all. But I'm very pleased that there is one person who has, you know, 20 people's worth of talent. in. <laughs> she's fit it into her frame somehow. <laughs> anyway, uh, when did you know or realise you might be famous? Oh... No, well, it's, see, this is a very difficult question to answer because whatever I say, I'm going to sound like an idiot. Oh, yeah. Well, it Do you wasn't, know what I mean? It wasn't meant that way. No. I'll put it to you like this. Okay. Tell me. I Do know. You, it... Do you ever get friends sending you on WhatsApp or whatever a GIF? Yeah. And they can use your face to reflect that you... emotion? Uh huh. Is that ever a bit like, guys, could we just... Well, it, first of all, it was my mum. So I was like, that doesn't count. You probably scoured the internet for 16 weeks trying to find a, a gif of your daughter and you found one. <laughs> so it's not a commonplace one. Sure. I get, I get very British about the whole thing. I, I, I'm absolutely hell-bent on living as much a normal life as possible. And there's something to do with the show, and I don't know what it is. I can't, I, I can't Amelia, identify with... As in, so, Simpsons... Wow. Wow. Me and my brother rinsed it. Like, we love The Simpsons. And obviously their opening credits will reflect some kind of pop culture of vibe. Course. And when my brother was like, The Simpsons have done Game of Thrones! And it was quite early doors. I feel yeah. like it was around season three. That, like... The couch. Yeah. That, yes, exactly. Yeah. That Incredible. was... And then you got mental. to be in Futurama. And then... Wait, what? I'm smellier than a whorehouse's outhouse. That's terribly vivid. Doesn't matter to me, though. I was born with no sense of smell. Really? No, I did. I was in. I was like, yeah, I was in. Amelia did. I did a voiceover of Futurama. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. That was amazing. Again, another thing that I watched a lot. So, yeah, <sighs> that was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I get too envious of, of people. Anyway, <laughs> how many of the friends at yes. dot R I, um, yes, I have love. you met yet? Oh, just Joey, and I want to meet them all. Mm -hmm. I love friends. So much. Amelia Clark, did you get to yes. chat with everyone backstage? Um, yeah, kind of. Did you get to talk to him? <laughs> yeah, kind of, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia Clark loves Matt LeBlanc. <laughs> Hi. 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 <laughs> Actually blushing. Um, yeah, I just think you're wicked. <laughs> this is mental that you're saying this because I did an Instagram post for my birthday and I was with my best mate Lola and um, and I, 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 I genuinely almost fainted at the person who commented on my post. Probably, it's probably the greatest Instagram post I've ever received, a comment I've ever received. Courtney Cox, Monica from Friends. I couldn't handle it. Me and Lola just like, melt, we had a meltdown. We had a complete and utter, oh my God, meltdown. That's a jump up and down. That's, that's Hef bigger than, yeah. That's bigger than anything, because those those are the only gifs I use. Monica would like when she gets her dreads when she goes away. You know, she has like the humidity hair, and then she puts the dreads on, and she, that's like. Mm. <laughs> I realise that they all have massive careers outside of Friends, but it, Friends was a big deal in my life. Whatever. We're going to jump back to last Christmas. Before we get there, yes. I'd like to ask a couple of kind of quickfire questions. Yes. And one of them is, what are fans on the street currently saying to you when they bump into you? Um, it's a mixture. Uh, sometimes, which I do love, is when, I mean, I don't love for them, but if they've had a brain injury or if they've had something like that, then I get that, which I love, mm -hmm. um, which is wonderful. Occasionally, quite a lot, I get their theories on how the last season should go. There was one where I was waiting for a cab and I was like, mm-hmm, I'll, <laughs> oh, there's another one, okay. <laughs> what? It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. It's good. Um, but largely speaking, it is, um, yeah, it's that, or I do get quite a lot of me before you as mm. well, which is lovely. Occasionally, I mean, the worst one I got recently, and it 
really hurt. Like it genuinely cut me up a little bit. I was in a supermarket the day after episode five had aired of okay. the last season when Daenerys had just gone out, yep. all out. Had a moment. Had a moment. Um, and I was in the supermarket and this woman turned to me and went, I don't know how you can show your face around here. And I literally went, oh, I didn't have to get some milk. <laughs> it was heartbreaking. <laughs> so yeah. It's funny now. I know. But then, but it, then was it was real sad. Then I was like, that sucks. Okay, I'll go. I'll get my milk somewhere else. Yes, goodbye. Yes. yes. Could you leave, please? Could you Before leave? you burn anything. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, I'd also like to ask you, when you're kind of shooting anywhere and everywhere, across the globe, wherever it might yeah. be, what British artefacts, be it food or a book or whatever it is, do yeah. you take with you? Tea. Mm. So predictable. Hate to be that So person. truthful. But tea. And then once when I was in LA for a little bit too long, I actually, one Sunday, managed... This is ridiculous, and please forgive me and what I, how I did this, but... I got my Sunday papers. <laughs> I was like, I just need the observer. I really need to need the papers in my hand. I, <laughs> just gotta have it. That gorgeous feeling of you've got like so you've got a kitchen table, you chuck the different Every supplements. Sunday. Like Every Sunday. Every yeah, just and that's what you do. You get the papers and you get rid of all you recycle all of the adverts. Sport I have to go through goodbye sports. Sometimes goodbye news just for a minute, because I'm just gonna focus on supplements today because I'm fed up with the news. Um, yeah, and then you just scatter them around your house. It makes and then you can just lie with your tea I feel like and pick a, up a magazine. I feel like an emperor. I'm yeah. like, yes, that's exactly the same. Not yet. Yeah, exactly. I'll get to I'm you coming later. Self care in the back of the observer. I'm coming to you at the end of the day. I might look a property. Night. Here we go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but if we... Film review, obviously, top of the pile. With Last Christmas, it is a film that does make you kind of maybe sort of cry a bit. Yeah, there's sad bits. How does that make you feel knowing that there will be audiences of people? I know. Just having a bit of a... Well, it's good. It's good. That's what the movies are there for. They are there to make you laugh more than you would do normally, cry about things that, you know, you watch something that makes you cry and you're not crying for the actor. You're not largely crying for the story. The story's gone, oh, remember that thing that you sort of not cried about in a while and maybe it'd be good to just let it go. Get angry, get excited. Yeah. That's what cinema should do. Because this movie got me because a lot of the film is centred around a small garden in central London. It's yes. next to St Giles. Yes. And uh, that is where I first asked my wife out on a date. No! And you're not going to believe me, ah! but it was on the bench where you sit. That is absolutely mental. With Henry. Can I just do this for you? That is amazing. Uh, it but was... there weren't the fairy lights there though. Because the lights... when I came back afterwards, I was like, this looks real different. So how we made it look. Well, I hate to say this, but I was actually That's looking... so amazing. We wanted to go into that garden. Oh. But annoyingly... Phoenix Garden. People were filming there. No. And was it your anniversary and we just ruined it? We would have accepted you with open arms, babe. We would have got you guys in and been like, do you want some craft services? <laughs> Can we get these guys some cake? But no, it was... It's just a gorgeous little spot. And you yeah. really show off London as well. Yeah. That must be so much fun to just be able to go... It's Christmas. It is. I love it. I love living here. I love filming here. I love it when people are like, oh my God, London's great. I'm like, yeah, it is. Um, all right, I'm going to leave you with this very silly question. Okay. Well, there's two actually. What's okay. the most memorable bit of direction you've ever got? There are, there are a couple of directors that should not be named on the show in Early Doors who were just like, what, well, you have dragons? And I'm like, oh, mate, you need to read the script. <laughs> you need to just have a little read the script. <laughs> um, it's tough, isn't it? Smilier, I get sometimes, or don't smile, or this is going to sound weird, but could you do the Khaleesi posture? <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> Every season I used to come back and I'd have done something, I'd have done a movie in the interim, right? And so I'm there and I, I screwed myself over really because Khaleesi sits like this and she has perfect posture and I had it from season one and it's like rod up your ass, nothing moves, mm -hmm. you are just still. And I have an ability to be really, really still. I'll go off and do these other movies and I come back and be like, what if I want to mess with it? What if Khaleesi's like a G? Do you know what I mean? What if Khaleesi's like such a badass now? She doesn't need to sit up straight. And God love them, they give me three or four takes. We'd call it the strawberry filter, as in 
if, like the, when an actor asks for the for a take that is never going to be in the cut, they go put on the strawberry filter. As in, don't start recording. <laughs> um, and then David and Dan or someone will come over and be like, "That's great, but could you just, you know, just do the Khaleesi posture? Just do, just do the Khaleesi posture." And I'm like, "Fine." For okay. safety. Yeah, exactly. Could we just, for fun, go back to you know, just do it as you always do <laughs> every year? <laughs> like, okay. All right, I'm getting Fine. the looks. I need to tell you. Sorry. My yes. final question is this: Could you show me your best photo ruining face? Photo ruining face. Yeah, but I can't. I can't figure out what lipstick I've got and if that's gonna. Um, leave it there. My brother has this face on his phone in so many different situations. <laughs> Sometimes he'll just send it to me and be like, "Remember this? Remember that your face can do this." This is you. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, yeah, we used to do that a lot. Yes. What an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Thank so, you so much, Milia. Thank, Thank you. Congratulations on the film as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum. <laughs>